Good evening, this is Dr. Cowens, um, your podiatrist. I'm here to talk real quick. I had a couple people today while I was outside of work um, ask me about this bump they get on the medial side of their foot. I get I, The question always is stated this way. It's stated like, Doc, I have this bump on the side, this, this side of my foot. It's just so painful. I can't walk i can't put on shoes i can't wear high heels like i want to what is it and what can i do uh, and so i always tell them that bump that you have in the medial side of your foot is what we call a bunion uh, medical term is called hallux abductal valgus and when i say this is looking at your big toe okay you have a metatarsal bone take this as your foot metatarsal bone and then you have two bones in your toe so the metatarsal first metatarsal distal phalanx proximal phalanx and you have a joint space joint space right here that allows your proximal phalanx and the toe area to move up and down uh, in nice gliding free motion uh, because there's a joint space between the phalanx and the metatarsal where bunions come from is where this motion and the joint congruity uh, between the phalanx bones and the metatarsals is slightly subluxed or dislocated. They're not in normal alignment. They're deviated or so. And when you have a deviated joint like that, you get a normal motion, you get grinding of bone, you get wearing of cartilage, you get a lot of pain, and you get that large bunion deformity, that large bone protrusion deformity. Because instead of your toe being like this, it's like that. And so, that's what we call a bunion. You get the, and the pain comes from that normal uh, motion at the joint and right along with bump pain from the protruding out. Um, so, with that being said, I get the question after I explain this, how did I get it? Well, number one factor of, of getting um, bunion or almost any type of foot issues that come out insidiously or out of nowhere is hereditary it's hereditary you inherited these bunions uh, or your feet from somebody in your family it was passed on through your genetics uh, i'm going to give you a, uh, a study that i read uh, the study is by uh, it's in the journal of arthritis care and research uh, it was published in uh, August 26, 2013, uh, and the title is High Heritability of Hallux Valgus and Lesser, tor lesser Toe Deformities in Adults and Women. And the, what the study did, it grabbed 2,446 adults, and they watched them over a period of time or so. They took into account age, sex, uh, weight, uh, body mass index, uh, uh, instability uh, it took all this into effect and what they wanted to find out is if, if these more were more the cause of developing bunions or is it more her hereditary and what they f uh, but first they wanted to know the numbers who got the, uh, the bunion deformities and what it found out was 31 percent of these individuals that were studied develop uh, these bunion deformities out of nowhere it wasn't from shoe wear. It wasn't from anything. They just naturally developed these. So this, so this study went to show that bunions are largely an inherited disorder. Um, and what it, and what they found out most of the time, the, the large, the largest percent of those who um, experienced the form of uh, bunion deformities are at, were white men and white women of European descent. So it goes to show that it, there's a high herit inheritability. Uh, hereditary uh, aspect to bunion deformity. So that was just a quick side note to let you know uh, a little bit more about bunions. Um, other causes of bunions, uh, which are not as, how can I say, as of high incidence as hereditary, is number two, foot injuries. Certain foot injuries like what we call turf toe, where the toe area is traumatically violently forced up 
It can be forced up while the foot's naturally on the ground, or you can be planting and somebody can land on your foot, forcing that toe up. And the medical term for that is called turf toe. Football players get this a lot. A lot of offensive linemen get this when they're trying to jam at the line and that force pushes them back, digging their feet into the ground, which causes that big toe to be dislocated up or when they're tackled abnormally um, on, by their legs or so and their feet and, and their big toe is, is kind of violently dislocated upwards. Um, so that's, a, that's the second reason for uh, getting bunion and uh, bunion pains. And number three, can't go wrong. It's juvenile bunions, but it's hereditary. A lot of individuals, young individuals, inherit these bunions from their mom and dad, but they inherit it early. They inherit it before they become adults. And this is all, again, congenital and hereditary. So these are what cause uh, foot deformities. Uh, and some are just, you know, like I said, most, a lot of these are congenital uh, or develop these at birth. Um, so these are causes. Now, what I'm going to mention next are not causes, but can make the situation worse. These are like risk factors or so that can make uh, uh, a moderate or a mild bunion, a mild bunion become moderate bunion, a moderate bunion become a severe bunion. Um, these are some things that that can contribute to bunion deformities and bunion pain and a normal motion when you're walking. Uh, so in that we call it the first metatarsal phalangeal joint or the joint where the first metatarsal meets the toe bones. Uh, so number one, pointed high heel shoes. Pointed high heel shoes cause the toes to be pressed together and to crowd each other. And when that happens, in order for you to get, out, to get normal motion when you're walking, it causes that first metatarsal to jet outwards a little bit, or medially, in medical terms, causing a normal uh, joint space motion and causing an, an abnormal alignment of that first metatarsal re, uh, joint region, causing that protrusion of the bone there, or what we call a bunion. Point in high heels, stay away from them, stay away from them. If you can. <laughs> Number two, ill-fitting shoes, shoes that are too tight, shoes that are too small, cause a normal crowding of not only toes, but the sides of the feet and causes and causes crowding and curling up of the toes. This too can contribute to bunion deformities and abnormal joint space of that region, causing bunion pain. Another reason are, uh, is we're going to get away from shoe wear, but in, uh, if you have some type of arthritis, uh, say rheumatoid or uh, psoriatic or uh, uh, osteoarthritis, any type of any type of arthritis can contribute to deform uh, bunion deformities by decreasing that joint space, causing pain and issues. And these things can also help to make a moderate or a mild bunion become worse, not only in structure but in pain. Um, and again. Another risk factor, hereditary. Not only, well, not, when I speak of hereditary, not just hereditary with this for a risk factor, it's the way you walk. Uh, some people inherit a, a certain type of walk or so, whether you have a tight Achilles cord or so, where you put a normal pressure when you're walking in a normal amount of, in an abnormal amount of time on that region of your foot, causing the bunion to protrude outwards and to have pain or so in a, and to have a normal motion. And a lot of times these people, they get these deformity have what we call a uh, uh, pes planus or more of a flat foot type. And this contributes to bunion deformities or so. So hereditary plays a significant role, significant, significant role in bunion deformities. Um, there are a lot more other reasons that could contribute to, uh, to bunion deformities, not just the ones I've mentioned, but these are some of the, the largest regions that contribute to, um, you know, bunion deformities and, and, and bunion issues. You know, other issues can be uh, uh, something falling, another type of trauma, something falling on your foot, you know, that can contribute to uh, bunion deformities. Uh, you can have something where, um, where you can have some type of gout, issue going on there and you don't really get a bunion deformity or so but it kind of eats away the joint space 
or so, and you can get a lot of pain in that area. Uh, so there's a lot of minor different things that can contribute to bunion pain or, or, or even make the bunion deformity even worse. But the ones that I mentioned earlier are the largest reasons why we have, uh, why, why, you, why your bunions are inherited and why they get worse. Um, other, like, and other, other things that you can think make our bunions but are not really bunions like you can have a little bursitis there in that region where it makes you think that you have a bunion pain but it's really not you can have a cyst in that area a ganglion cyst so these are all contributing factors and these are all things that kind of mimic bunions but what i mentioned earlier are the reasons how you why you get bunion pain and bunion uh, issues so with that being said treatment rise there's only one full way to treat bunion uh deformities and bunion pain and that's surgery i'm not gonna go into that but surgery is the main way to treat it if you if your bunion pain is not that bad you just can be uncomfortable for a while you know you want you want to look at these conservative methods i'm about to mention one is having like a felt pad or a silicone pad on the, on the medial side of your foot where um where it protects your foot your shoe from rubbing up against that area protecting that that medial side of that bump or so make the help it to uh, feel better uh and to prevent any type of friction against that region. Another way is a toe spacer, of either a foam or silicone toe spacer in between the big toe and the second toe. What that does is straighten out the, the big toe when you're walking or when you're standing, decreasing the, angu the angulation of your bone, your bunion, in, in, in layman terms, makes your bunion less deformed when you're walking or when you're standing, uh, as opposed to if you don't do it. Uh, this is not a, Permanent thing, this is only temporary when you're wearing the toe spacer or when you're wearing that pad or so. Number three is a bunion splint, doctor recommended, where you put a little small splint on your foot and it keeps your toe straight. The best And the best time to do this is when you're resting, watching TV, or when you're sleeping. I mean, that can be a little uncomfortable when you're sleeping, but but it, that's the purpose for it, is to, is to decrease that um, the amount of, deformity that's going on on a daily basis and it's helped to keep your toe straight on a longer period of time um, and it's helped and it helps the soft tissue to be more relaxed in a straight position so it doesn't cause your big toe to uh, bunion to increase on a more readily basis so toe spacer uh, felt pad silicone pad and the bunion split and not wearing tight shoes not wearing pointing high heels, uh, wearing shoes with an orthotic to, pre to prevent abnormal motion when you're walking. These are certain subtle little conservative tr uh, treatment methods that can help with keeping off bunion pain and, and, and I'll say keeping off your bunion deformity from getting worse on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but with all that being said and done, most likely if your family members got bunions, and they, and you de you already have developing bunions. It's gonna it's going to get worse. It's it's hereditary. Sorry, folks, but it's gonna get worse. The only way to fully treat it is surgery. But anyways, I just want to mention this about bunions because a lot of people ask about this. If you have a lot of pain, a lot of issues, go see your local podiatrist, and he can give you some more recommendations. Um, you know, he can and he, and he can help you out any way, conservatively and surgically. Um, another another conservative way is, is a shot. You want a shot, <laughs> but anyways, uh, stay tuned. I will be this weekend going Facebook Live talking about a common foot deformities that are inherited and what to watch out for, how to protect your feet, and the surgeries for these deformities that are inherited. Anyways, I'm Dr. Alvin Cowens. You can find me on Facebook as Alvin Jeffrey Cowens, or you can find me on YouTube as Alvin Cowens Podiatrist. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me at jeffcfau25 at hotmail.com. Uh, click the subscribe button because I will be back just talking medicine and helping you guys out. Anyways, take care and take care of each other. Love you. Bye.